Hello, welcome to Talks at Brickstone, your one-stop podcast for research, insights and interviews on thought leadership issues relating to Africa's infrastructure, built environment and natural environment. I'm your host, Femi Awufala. Okay, in this podcast, we will be talking more about um, an important topic, which I think we need to start getting into into the infrastructure space and letting letting a, a number of entrepreneurs know about why and how to prepare an infrastructure pit deck and um i will take you through a very important course in our deal camp series which is the project finance fundamentals for entrepreneurs and there's a course there which we take on the third day i think um, i can just give a bit of snippet around the course letting you know what exactly um, we are trying to achieve and why preparing an infrastructure big deck is, is very important and is different. Now, one of the things which a number of people have been doing um, in the fundraising space, especially in the tech space, is that when you have a technology pitch deck, you know, you can actually have your, your kind of like your MVP, your minimum viable products, or sort of like a demo to demonstrate that, you know, your idea will work or your idea has the capacity to attract the right market or the revenue um, you aspire to, to earn. But when you are an entrepreneur developing an infrastructure project, you basically don't have that luxury. You don't have that opportunity. All you're saying is, there's a need, there's a gap in the market, and you basically are going to get these assets deployed if you have funding from investors, both lenders and equity holders. And if this asset is deployed based on your off-take agreement or on your concession agreement or whatever definitive agreement you have, you are sure that there'll be user fees paid and there'll be demand for this product or service. So that process itself is very, very different, you know, from the process of a tech, you know, pitch deck or even an SME or any business pitch deck itself. Because um, for for an infrastructure project, you know, large scale amount of money is being deployed and, you know, people are not going to take risks. So I'll just run you through in itself. Now, preparing an infra pitch. In infra pitch, um, as I said earlier, has a very, very um, delicate and a very clear objective. One is to communicate to its stakeholders, either the government or equity partners or lenders or whatever investors that there's value in the project and the project you know, itself um, is bankable and also the project's um, has the right ability to provide the returns with a very predictable cash flow. Now I will just you know run you through the other slides. Um, why you need an infra pitch deck? So in, in project finance context, right? Um, the term project development refers to the preparing of a new project for commercial operations, and one of the key things uh, you do um, in, in, in developing projects, especially when you're going through a project finance methodology in financing the project, is you will need to go through what you call the early development stage, where you originate the project and you basically secure a conditional right from a season authority um, via a tender process or an unsolicited proposal. And this stage requires you to maybe submit a bid, you know, submit whatever kind of presentation to your stakeholders, um, you know, to your promoters to get the, the, the project, you know, move to the next level. At the pre-financing stage, you basically negotiate your agreements, you look at issues related to your participants, and you define clearly what the technical, economic, and commercial outlines of the project is. And, and, and at this pre-financing stage, we really deal a lot on it on our, on our deal camp series, where we, we explain to you the various types of agreement that encompasses this in itself. 
in the financing stage, you know, you need to mobilize financings, you know, uh, jointly, maybe your own resources or with your lenders. And you go through a huge level of due diligence and try and make sure you meet your, you know, condition precedents and make sure that all the requirements of the lenders are met before they, 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 they disburse funding to you or to the project vehicle. And in the post-financing stage, you know, you, you still have to manage the organization of the SPV. You have to be involved in one way or the other, even though not directly with the construction and make sure, you know, objectives are met. You know, you, you, so you, you as an entrepreneur, um, you go through these four phases every now and then in developing a large-scale project, whether it's a solar, you know, energy project or it's a um, oil and gas refinery. You, know, you just name it. And and why the infra pitch deck is important is that as an entrepreneur, you need to take ownership of that document. You need to be able to. It's your selling document. And what I've found um, has been a bit of a, a a kind of like a a limitation is the fact that a number of entrepreneurs still rely on consultants to help them prepare these things but however it's not a bad idea but it's something i think most entrepreneurs should prepare that by themselves and if possible if they have to even get someone to do it for them they need to be able to deliver it and present it by themselves at any point in time without requiring anyone assistance whatsoever. Because at the end of the day, you know, investors are, 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 and government who are giving you a concession, they are investing in you and they're not investing in your consultants. So we, we believe that, you know, it's high time for um, entrepreneurs to start getting to that level of understanding how to do this, you know, in itself. Remember, uh, it's, it's 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 going to be a document that from the early stage from the early development stage it might be very simple a few slides but as your project evolves through the pre-financing the financing and the post-financing stage that document keeps you know um evolving over and over again and and as a point of note this is not your feasibility report this is not your business plan this is not your info memo or your financial model but it's a sort of a document that you could call a teaser or a document that you basically would use time and time again, you know, to engage with the number of people, you know, you have interest with and things. Now, in terms of um, why you need an infra page, you know, um, oftentimes entrepreneurs may have a wonderful startup idea, um, but it's important for them to be able to pitch it right. And a good infra pitch is as important as the idea itself. And if you don't, you know, document it appropriately, you might be communicating wrongly to your, you know, to your potential financiers and they don't understand what you've said. And, and there's no way for them to be, you know, to, to get you that financing you need. Imagine um, you're trying to do a real estate project and, and you know you've not even bought the land yet or you've not even secured funding yet but you need to just put something together this is what we call uh, an infra pitch deck in itself so i will go through it again and i'll go through the various slides so it's basically organized in a very concise manner it should be delivered within 20 to 30 minutes in fact it should be delivered in like 10 10 10 10 15 minutes if you are very 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 vast with your with your project idea but 20 to 30 minutes is also a, a good time. Um, it will lead to stakeholder meetings. So this is a kind of presentation that when you leave your stakeholders, you know, they, they tend to let you say that, okay, can we have a next meeting? It helps to build investor confidence. You know, you are quite confident of what exactly is happening, what exactly they are trying to do and a number of things. And each slide has a bit of graphics or pictures or or some form of like, you know, eye-catching um, 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 imagery that, you know, um, gives the readers, you know, a very clear idea of what you're trying to do. And each slide should have between three to five bullet points that are, you know, very, very distinct and not cluttered. And, and the presentation format may depend from company to company, but we believe that if you follow this format we've presented, I mean, you will be able to, basically have a clear 
view of your idea and a clear overview of how that idea should um, be pitched. Now on the next slide, I'll just say um, we're going to have eight key um, subject titles. You're going to have the introduction, um, the problem, the solution. Um, we're also going to have a project status um, section. We're going to have a risk and mitigation section. We're going to have a management team timeline and, and summary and key request. Um, for somebody who is very, very vast in PowerPoint presentation and, and things, you could actually do this in eight slides, you know, but there may be some slides where you need more than one or two slides. So some, some topics or sections where you need to explain it in one or two or even three slides, you know, a lot more better. So I'll start, you know, from the first slide. So from the introduction, um, it's a very important slide and requires a lot of time to create and because it must be very comprehensive and, and, and compelling. So what is important here is you need to introduce yourself, your company, and you need to clearly state what your company does and give a bit of history. And for some reasons, maybe you are trying to develop a project and you feel you don't have the right technical background and think itself. Uh, maybe you are trying to do a refinery project, but your ability to, to, to demonstrate that experience in refinery is not there. Um, it's also important at the very introductory stage to talk about your collaboration or your technical partners um, that gives you or helps you to bridge that gap, you know. So, and also, um, it's also key to also let people know what your history is all about as a company. Um, don't just put ABC Nigeria Limited. You know, you want to be able to say, you know, you've been doing some other type of things. It could be a project that has to do with, you know, um, downstream oil and gas, but you're not doing a power project. But, you know, it's important for stakeholders to see what your experience are in project delivery, just generally, not necessarily on the project you're actually trying to pitch. The second thing is um, now you talking about the problem or the opportunity you see. Um, this is also a very clear, this also has to be done in a very clear way and you allow investors to understand your value proposition. Um, you need to define the infrastructure problem and you need to define your the need in the market and also describe how significant or how prevalent that problem would be. And, you know, sometimes, you know, a road, you know, it could be a toll road, it could be an oil and gas project, it could be whatever project, you know, in itself that, that, that requires project finance. But you need to also let your stakeholders or your audience know why this is the right time to develop it, you know. And, and here you could also talk about, you know, a case study problem. So, you know, how this um, infrastructure project or how this airport um, that was done in this city in Africa, after it was done, how we improved their air traffic, how they had more trade or more investors coming into their city and things like that, you know. Sometimes what you're trying to do is what or what you're trying to develop is not yet, you know, um, being done. And because infrastructure projects sometimes are unique, um, your best point of comparison is to just give a problem case study scenario and, and this will help you provide a basis for your project. So this second section could be done within, you know, one to two slides. And when you are delivering, it should be more than two minutes to deliver in itself. Now in the third area, you talk about um, how the solution, uh, how to show your solution, to, or, uh, the solution your project is providing um, is to solve, to solve this problem in a sustainable manner. Um, you also need to describe the project's uh, product or service. Um, you also need to show in graphs or pictures or videos as necessary um, and also provide a, a very understandable illustration of, illustration of how the project will be structured. Remember, uh, in a project finance deal, you have a special purpose vehicle, you have host government on one side, you might have your lenders on the other side. You need to have an EPC contractor and, and if also possible, uh, it might, you also could have an O&M, you know, helping out in the operations and management of your 
of your facility, you know, post financing. And you need to also pro probably name these parties and explain their roles. Uh, why the contractual structure is important in your in your infra page is it gives your audience or your stakeholders a clear understanding that you, you of where they fit in in your project structure. So you know if you have, if you if you if you if you know you're going to have um, an EPC contractor and you're doing a pitch to an EPC contractor, you should know where he fits in. So it, it does give everybody a clarity, the clarity on how the project is being put together. Now, this is also a very simple slide. You have to make sure it's very simple and very, very straightforward too. Now, once you're done with your problem and solution, you basically have already introduced the project. Now, sometimes your solution could be a particular equipment you are deploying or whatever and things like that. But um, at any point in time, investors want to see traction. They want to see that you've had partnerships you've established, you know, you have investors you are speaking with, or if possible, you have contacts or your contracts established with a number of counterparties like your off-takers or your lenders or, or, or interested investors. You know, but you need to back this up by a letter of intent. You know, you just don't want to just drop names. You want to be very, very clear that, you know, they've made interest in it. And you also want to describe the milestones you've achieved in terms of your design that you've been doing or you've already about to start or you're procuring for an, for a designer, maybe to design your facility um, from a front-end engineering design or you are doing some negotiations at the moment or... You are trying to complete an information memorandum or, and a financial model for the project. And also, um, there's also need um, for you to talk about what you think the project will cost. Uh, this is also quite early in the process itself, but you want to have a bit of um, uh, direction on, on project costing. I, I know it might be difficult to put it in pen and paper, that this is the bottom line that's going to cost you to build the facility. But, you know, you want to be able to have, a, you know, a, a very, very um, adequate um, estimate. Now, that it doesn't mean that um, it won't change. So you could look at other preceding projects that have been done before yours or a similar project to your own gas plant or LPG plant that you're trying to develop. And you find out that the last two were done for about $25 million. Um, they have the same capacity or even more. And so you could also even speak to a number of these EPC guys. Um, they'll basically give you free um, information about that. And you also need to propose a financing mix, you know, whether it's going to be debt equity, you know, whichever percentage is going to be. Um, are you going to bring in some mezzanine and things like that? And these are things that um, you as an entrepreneur need to be able to, to demonstrate very, very clearly. And any other important information that you think, you know, to validate or will help to reduce the risk, you know, um, you put it there as your status, you know. Um, so this section four basically focuses on the project status and how to move the project, you know, forward. Management team. Now, um, you're rounding up your presentation. You need to really put in the right credentials or the people or your team members and also your group of advisors. You know, you need to make sure you put in the right strong credentials. You need to ensure that it has the right um, mix of both experience and also um, technical capacity in itself. So if you are working with a technical advisor or your board of directors or your financial advisors, you want to put those people here uh, in itself. And um, next will now be your risk and mitigants. Um, why you need to identify the risks is because these are the obvious questions the investors will ask you. And they believe that um, the more prepared you are in terms of responding to issues on 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 on, on risk mitigation, the better um, sound or the better confidence they have in you that you have the project well thought through. So um, you explain your risk rate from the development stage to the construction stage to the operation stage, and you pick out each item: issues on permitting, licensing, issues related to 
the EPC construction itself, you know, the construction quality and the operations. And each of these risks, you know, there are there are ways which we've discussed in our project finance, you know, um, uh, program on how to mitigate them, how to deal with them, um, the kind of like um, action plans or, or clauses you need to have in your agreement that helps to ensure that risk is moved away from you as the promoter or as the SPV to other counterparties in your deal. Um, as I said again, um, your risk and mitigants are things that you are evolving, you know, as you move the project from one level to another, you know, the mitigants, you know, you know are being improved upon. Some might require credit enhancements or whatever to just help minimize that risk in itself. So you need to be vast in this and you need to be able to you know, sit with your team, your lawyers, your financial advisors, have a risk register and try and deal out, you know, these issues and have really, really clear response plan for them. Now, remember one thing in, in, in project finance, which we discussed in our course, is that any risk that, hack that can be really passed upon to another counterparty within the project contractual framework will be borne by the, by the promoters, the sponsors themselves. So you... You, the more you don't have answers to a number of these risks uh, being mitigated, you know, the more um, uh, you need to kind of like, you know, provide the, a backstop or provide the right um, um, guarantees that, you know, you will take on those risks. And, um, and sometimes if you don't have the right advisors, it becomes a very, uh, a very important issue for you to move forward. Now, um, rounding up your presentation, you need to show your key milestones that you want to achieve. Now, remember when you talk about the status, status just talks about where you are now. But key milestones is saying, saying, you know what, where are you taking us going forward? So, you need to have specific milestones of what you really want to achieve within a space of one year or a space of one and a half years. Um, I always advise um, entrepreneurs or infrapreneurs developing large-scale projects to always make their milestone windows in, 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 in boxes of um, maximum of one year. So you really want to start having a one-year horizon from, from now because um, you want to be very deliberate that you know, you've thought it through and you, these are the really things you need to do to achieve your goal. Now, a, a, a typical milestone could be financial close, depending on where you are. And, but if you are in the early stage, you know, a typical milestone could also be you, you know, signing your core agreements, you know, your, your off-take agreement, your concession agreement, and things like that. And 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 the number of time this, this thing takes time, it takes rigor, it takes a huge amount of energy, you know, from the entrepreneur, you know, to see this through. Now um, in summarizing, you also now have a summary um, sheet or in your oh, sorry, a summary slide where you just talk about exactly what you want. Remember, as I mentioned, that your 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 project deck could be used by your government. It could be it could be addressed to your stakeholders. It could be addressed to your equity investors. But it's very important for you at the end of the presentation to clearly spell out in black and white what exactly you want you know you want financing you want partnership you're seeking um a concession agreement you're seeking um an investor to uh, to, to to come along with you to write with you as a, as a jv partner in this um it's very important to to make sure that you you scope out what your key request is because i mean it's a nice idea at the end of the day um, you want the person receiving the document to know how to put this into action, you know. And if, if it's this, if it's well done, it's all, it always leads to, you know, the right type of um, opportunity at any point in time. It always leads to you having um, 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 communicating in the right way. So. Um, that's all today um, about um, developing an infra page. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, if you have any comments or suggestions, please leave a comment in um, the link you find below. You could find our, our email or 
You could also even go to our website and, and just fill the contact form to leave a comment on what you think about it. And you may also be having challenges with putting this together when we are just a phone call away um, in, in, in communicating how to put your, your, your preliminary project pitch together in itself. And mind you, um, as much as it sounds easy, you know, running through these eight slides or eight sections, you know, uh, it requires a real clear thinking. It requires you to have thought through your project very deeply to now put together a, a project pitch, you know. So that thinking process, that structuring process you know in itself um is required but as i said you know it's this this document you know is evolving it comes at early stage you know so you might not have it that good at the beginning but as you start meeting new people as you start evolving your project with various counterparties um the pitch deck start evolving and start getting better and better and better in itself thank you once again and have a good time bye